How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Johnny here again, looking at 17.2 stuff, where we're going to talk about buffered solutions. So objective, explain what a buffered solution is and how they resist changes in pH. Also explain the concept of buffer capacity and use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to determine the properties of a buffered solution, such as the pH, concentration of the acid or base, Ka, uh, response to addition of acids or bases, so stuff like that. All right, so what do buffers do? Buffers resist change in pH when an acid or a base is added. So let's say I have a buffered solution on my left and an unbuffered solution on the right. If I get some strong acid and I add my strong acid to my buffered solution, it's going to change the pH of the buffered solution, but not by a whole lot, especially when we compare it to what happens when we add a strong acid into our unbuffered solution. Unbuffered, it's going to change the pH a lot more than it did in the buffered solution. So buffered solution only changed like 0.5 and this one changed like 4. So dramatic change in unbuffered solutions when compared to buffered. How's it do that? All right, a buffer, a buffer will have a weak acid in it. So if a base is added, it'll neutralize the base and the pH won't change greatly. So the weak acid will neutralize any base that gets added to it. It will also have a conjugate base. So the conjugate base, if an acid is added, the conjugate base will neutralize the acid and the pH won't change greatly. So it can also be the opposite. Instead of having a weak acid and its conjugate base, you can have a weak base and its conjugate acid. All right, so let's say this is my buffered solution, or I'm going to make one. I start with a weak acid, which I'm going to call HA. I put it into my solution. Some of it's going to dissociate, right? So some of it's going to break apart and ionize. We're going to then add a salt that has the conjugate base of my weak acid to it. So here I got a salt, XA. The A is my conjugate base. Uh, and we can ignore the other half. We can ignore the X because it's not going to be uh, involved in the, the chemistry that we're doing. So we have our weak acid, its conjugate base, and we're going to get something that looks like this. So now let's see what happens when I add some acid. So I add some acid. What's going to happen is... The acid is going to react with the conjugate base that's present. So we add some more H plus, some acid, and it's going to react with some of these, you know, A minuses, the conjugate base that's floating around. So they're going to react and they're going to bond. So overall, the amount of H plus in my solution hasn't changed a whole lot. So the pH is going to stay relatively the same. All right, well, what happens if we added a base? So let's add some base. Well, I added a base. And the undissociated acid, such as this one right here, is going to neutralize it by giving a hydrogen to those bases. So if we add a base, it gets neutralized by the acids that are there. And if we add an acid, it gets neutralized by the bases there. Overall, there's going to be very little change in the pH. Cool. So we start with a buffer containing an acid and its conjugate base. If we add some strong acid, what's going to happen is we're going to neutralize the acid by the conjugate base. So the fact that we added some of the conjugate base to the solution will neutralize any acid. Uh, overall, minimal change in H+, and therefore pH stays pretty much the same. If we add a strong base, we're going to, you know, if we add the strong base here, it's going to be neutralized by the acid, the weak acids that's in there. So it's neutralized by the weak acid. Overall, not a whole lot of change in the H+, pH is going to stay relatively the same. Why are buffers important? So what? whoop de doo All right. Well, first off, in biology, blood acts as a buffer because pH is very important to enzyme activity. If you change the pH, the enzymes aren't going to carry out the reactions that they're doing as effectively or efficiently, and they're not going to work as well. So it's very important, uh, biologically speaking, for that. It's also important for, like, if we're trying to make stuff. We're doing chemistry, and we're trying to get a reaction to make a product that we want. A lot of these reactions are pH sensitive, and pH can affect the chemical reaction and how um, how good it's happening, how quickly it's happening. Uh, so it's important to control pH during some reactions. All right, buffer capacity. So you guys know about capacity. It's like how much can something hold, right? So buffer capacity has to do with how much acid or base it can handle. So the more of the weak acid and conjugate base that you have, uh, then you can handle more acid and base being added. So for example, this would be an example of a low uh, buffer capacity because it's only got a couple of, you know, of the acids and the conjugate bases um, 
Whereas this one, we have a lot of the acids. We have more acids. We have more of the conjugate bases. So this can handle more stuff, right? Because I got more of my, my weak acid and my conjugate base. All right, so mathematically, thought for capacity. We know Ka equals this. It's H plus times the anion over the acid. If I've rearranged it to solve for H plus because I'm interested in seeing how it affects pH, this is what I get. I get Ka times Hx over the anion. Right? pH is going to depend on Ka. Right? So if I'm worried about H plus concentration, it's going to depend on Ka and the relative amounts of Hx and X minus. Because, you know, 2 over 2 versus, you know, 200 over 200 is still going to give me the same thing when I plug it into here. I'm still going to get the same H plus concentration. So pH depends on Ka and relative amounts. Now, the more of each we have, the more resistant it is to the changing pH. So these are equivalent for the H plus, giving us our pH, but these have different capacities. And I'll show you mathematically. For example, let's say this is my original setup. I got two HXs and two X minuses, and I add one base to it. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to neutralize one of my acids. So I'm going to get minus one up top, and I'm also going to make another base. So I'm going to get plus one on the bottom. So what happens is now I get like one over three. Now, let's say, for example, I had something, like I was saying before, 200 of each, and I add one base. Well, now I'm going to have to subtract one from my acid because it neutralized one of my acids, and it made another base. So now I'm going to get 199 over 201, which is still almost equal to the same thing. Right? It's pretty close and not changing at all. So that's how you know buffer capacity works. All right, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It's a streamlined approach to calculating pH of a buffered system. So this is my Ka. We said that a second ago. We rearranged it to solve for H+. Now, this is where we streamline things. If I take the negative log of both sides of this equation, I'm going to get something that looks like this. Negative log of H+, plus equals negative log of Ka times Hx over X-. minus. Right? All I did was take negative log of both sides, now, I'm going to do some algebra magic. I know that this negative log of H plus is pH. So this is what I'm going to do. pH equals pKa, right? Because the log um, of Ka, negative log is pKa. That's what P is saying. And then I have plus log of the base over the acid. And the, the way I was able to flip these things was with logs, when you flip the inside, what you're doing is it's like you're negating it. So I got rid of the negative for this part by flipping the inside of it, right? So this is my equation. pH equals pKa plus log of the base over the acid, right? So I'm going to even write that, base over the acid. Probably easy to remember that. All right, here, sample problem. What is the pH of a buffer? that has 0.1 molar in lactic acid with that Ka and 0.05 molar in sodium lactate. So first I'm gonna just plug stuff in. pH equals pKa, which is negative log of my Ka, which is given right here. So I plug that in, plus log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. So boom, 0.1 is the acid, 0.05 is the base because lactate is the anion. Right, so lactic acid is my acid. This is going to give me my conjugate base. So concentration of that is my conjugate base. And I plug it in and I get 3.55. That's all you got to do. A little plug and chug action. All right, so what if we added acid or base to the buffer? So let's say I had the buffer containing my, you know, acid and conjugate base. I added some strong acid. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to, get neutralized by some of my base, making more of the acid, right? So the amount of base will go down. The amount of base goes down, and the amount of the acid will go up. So i got to look at how much of the acid and base I have in my solution, and then i got to recalculate the new acid and base concentrations. 
Now, if I were to add a strong base, well, what happens is it's going to be neutralized by some of my acid. So I'm using up some of my acid and I'm going to make more of my conjugate base. So the acid will go down and the base will go up. So now I got to recalculate the new concentrations for the acid and the base. Then I can plug it into my Henderson Hasselbalch equation and be done with it. Sample problem. A buffer is made by adding 0.2 moles of acetic acid. So this is my acid, right? So I got 0 0.200 moles and 0 0.200 moles of my sodium acetate, which is going to give me my conjugate base. So I also have the same thing, 0 0.200 for my base and enough water to make one liter of solution, which is nice to know. Calculate the pH of the solution after 0 0.010 moles of NaOH, which is a strong base, is added. All right, well, if I'm adding base, what's going to happen is my acid concentration is going to go down because it's going to neutralize the base, which means I'm making more of my conjugate base, so that's going to go up. Well, how much is it going to change by? That much. So, my acid now is going to go down 0 0.01 moles, and my base is going to go up by 0 0.01 moles. So my new acid is going to equal 1 point, oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.190, and my new base is going to equal 0 0.210. So now I use my Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa, which is negative log of the Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 plus a log of my base, which is going to be my 0 0.210 over my acid 0 0.190. And when you plug that in and you press equals, you get 3.78 as your pH. Now for a frame of reference, the pH before the NOA, NaOH was added was equal to 3.74. So it barely changed. You know, it barely changed. Went from 3.74 to 3.78. Didn't change much. That's what a buffer's doing. It's resisting that change. So a note, a note to you guys. Sometimes they'll make it take more steps. It's the same problem, but they're like, you know what? Instead of telling you how many moles of base we added, we're going to give you a solution. So they can give you a concentration and volume of an acid or a base that they want you to add to your buffered system. In that case, you need to calculate the moles of acid and base added and account for the effect of dilution that it had on the system. It can be kind of annoying. My advice, use moles instead of molarity, all right? When you plug it into the equation with log of the molarity of the base over the molarity of the acid, you're gonna get the same answer if you use log of the moles of the base over the moles of the acid. Because think about this, the only difference is molarity is going to be moles per liter, and you're going to divide that by moles per liter, but of the base, or acid on the bottom, base up top, and you're using the same liters. The liters are the same, so they're going to drop out. So it's probably easier just to use moles of the base and the acid, all right? Summarize, buffers resist change to pH when acids or bases are added. They are created when a weak acid is in solution with its conjugate base or a weak base with its conjugate acid. The more of each you have, the greater the buffer capacity is. Here's the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Make it your friend. All right. Uh, it's derived from the Ka expression. Know when to use it. Know what each thing is. That's it. All right. Hope you found that helpful. I will see you in class.